Okay, hello everyone and welcome to API Night. Um, we're really, really excited to be uh, joined by you this evening and to have the wonderful, wonderful Daniel from Stripe here to speak to us this evening. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with our program, uh, week seven of the immersive program is actually Industry Partners Week. And this is where partners from our community graciously give us their time and donate their mentorship and support to our students in order for them to help their journey as new programmers. Um, so up first, we are going to have a Daniel and then after Daniel presents, we are going to actually get into the student presentation. So Daniel, thank you so much for being here tonight. Please take it away. Thank you. Um, it's been a pleasure to work with the students over the last week. We had some great questions from them and we had some fantastic feedback. Uh, I will not stand in the way between uh, you and their presentations. I am hugely curious as to what uh, they've ended up building because I've only seen some questions uh, about Stripe usage so far. So let me quickly uh, walk through a little bit on what Stripe is and then get out of the way and uh, we can all enjoy their presentations. So first of all, um, my name is Daniel. I was uh, born in Ireland, graduated from the University of Tokyo, over 10 years or a oh, long time ago now, 2013. Uh, worked at Cookpad as an engineer and uh, then joined in Stripe in uh, 2014 and uh, have been here since. Um, Stripe's mission is to increase the GDP of the internet. That might sound a little bit opaque, but the idea is that we want to enable new companies uh, so that they can bring new value to the world and uh, we can give them the, if we can provide the infrastructure that they need we should be able to increase the size of uh, e commerce that's happening on the internet so to give a little bit of background of how stripe got started go back to 2007 this thing called twitter was starting to come on the scene there were rumors of an iphone coming around um, and our founders were making a product called Optimatic, which was a SaaS product for ebay uh, power sellers now, it was actually fine to produce this and we're able to get it deployed and get it in users' hands, but the, the problem was actually mostly around payments, how to actually sell the thing. So uh, at the time, if you wanted to get up and running and accepting payments online, you had to go through sort of a website like this and fill out all these fields and you could maybe use PayPal, but you'd have the 466 page PDF was the, the document that you had. And uh, that's what inspired Stripe or our, co our founders, uh, Patrick and John, to get started on writing Stripe. And this is the first commit from 2009. So fast forward to today, a lot of uh, companies that you may recognize uh, from across the world are using Stripe. And in Japan, we have a exciting mix of uh, both well-known household names and also some really exciting startups using our technology. At the base, we have our sort of core payment stack. And on top of that, we have a various uh, set or a varied set of applications that allow you to uh, build on top of that payment stack to build out your business and um, connect for marketplaces. Radar is a set of tools for uh, fighting fraud using machine learning. And billing is a set of tools for recurring billing SaaS companies, that type of, uh, of, of thing. I'll stop there. I'll just say we're hiring. Um, we're, we've spoken to some fantastic uh, coach Chrysalis um, OBs, uh, OGs, as they say, and uh, would uh, love to talk to anyone who is looking to get started. Uh, look at our website if you're interested in seeing some jobs we have. Um, kind of weird to say come and say hi when it's such an online event, but my uh, Twitter handle is there if you want to get in touch. And um, looking forward to hearing from you. That's it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Daniel. Uh, and again, thank you for always for being here uh, for these presentations. Um, so uh, yeah, so we'll turn it over to Team Code Snippets in just a moment. But before we get started with Team Code Snippets, um, I want to talk a little bit about what Industry Partners Week is. 
Um, so at the beginning of this week, week seven in the immersive boot camp, students have a grueling day where they have to uh, basically fill a halfway review with everything they learned in the first half of the course and build a full stack out from scratch in one day. Um, and then the very next day, we give them the remit for this project, which is build as a team um, in their only second ever team project, a full stack app from scratch with the only requirement being that they use our partner's technology. So in this case, it was uh, Stripe. So, you know, you can see the apps tonight. They're, they're completed in about three and a half or four days, you know, depending on how long students spend refining and, and preparing for their presentations. And so it's really incredible stuff to think that, you know, just a few weeks ago when students were in the very beginning of the course or in pre-course or some of our students took foundations, they were struggling with for loops. So we're really, really excited to be presenting the projects that you're gonna see tonight. Um, so I'm gonna welcome Code Diggle to get ready to present, or sorry, Team Code Snippets to get ready uh, to present. And what I wanna tell you about their app is they've built a starting point for a premium code sharing community. And that community is called Code Snippets. Um, so basically what it is, is users can get code from the best programmers out there by viewing it as a free user or on their premium tier. And I'm going to let them tell you a little bit more about that. So Team Code Snippets, are we ready to go? We're ready. Thank you. OK, awesome. Right. Take it away. OK, hello, everyone. Uh, today, I'd like to introduce you to our project. And uh, this is a really exciting project for us. Um, it's called Code Snippets. Uh, code, snippet, uh, code Snippets is an online community for coders to get and share some of the uh, best code to solve problems in their project. And right, so before we get into our app, uh, we're going to go ahead and introduce ourselves. Um, I'm Seth, I'm from uh, Salt Lake City, and I've been living in Tokyo for about eight years. Um, I love biking and I'm a general tech enthusiast. Um, and I'm the tech lead for our project. Gabriel here. I've been living overseas for the rest of my life, eight years in Melbourne, and the rest of Hong Kong. I like reading and games. And I'm Dominic. Uh, I've been in Japan for about 10 years, and if I'm not coding, I'm usually playing some sort of video game. So let's jump into our idea creation. So at first, we weren't sure what sort of content we wanted to show, but we did have a business model in mind. Uh, to generally put it, we wanted users to be able to come to our site and see uh, some amount of content or at least a preview of all of our content, but some of it would be behind a paywall. Uh, and we weren't sure what to make that content at first. We could have done like blog posts or cooking recipes. Um, but we decided to go with something similar to Lead Code because they also have this similar business model. So how Lead Code works is you can see their list of data structures and algorithms uh, problems, but some of them you can't access unless you're a premium member. So we rolled with this idea. And for our app concept, uh, we have code snippets. So users can view code from a variety of different topics, not just limited to data structures and algorithms. Uh, but if you want to see all of our content, you would have to make an account and sign up to get access to those premium snippets. Uh, so let's jump into what it looks like for someone new using our app. Oh, hey, code snippets, Jerry code everybody. I'm pretty interested. Hmm, seems like they have a lot of code snippets here. Generate for a bit of numbers. Hey, reverse link list. Let's take a look. Oh, that seems pretty interesting. Ah, how night of code, code snippets. We don't have to just copy this entire thing like that. We can just copy it with the click of a button. All right, let me take a look at more of these code snippets. Ah, multiple regression. Pretty interesting. Let's take a look. Oh, it looks like I have to sign in to, to see their premium content. Well, okay. Well, I don't have an account, so I'm just going to sign up. Hmm, all right. I've entered my credentials and I've signed up now. Huh. Now I should be able to view their multiple regression code snippet. Oh, it looks like I'm gonna have to pay to, to see the premium content. Let's just do that. I'm pretty interested 
to see that multiple regression code snippet. All right, this takes me to the Stripe checkout page. And oh, let me just enter my information quickly. And hopefully, Stripe processes our payment. All right, looks like it has. And it's now I'm a premium user. I can now check all their premium contents. Let's go back to multiple regression. And ta da! I can see it now. Hey, close up, it looks pretty cool. Can't wait for the features. And now that concludes the end of our demo. Let's move on to the diagram of our UX flow. And as you can see here, we start from the home page. And of course, users can go to the sign in and login page when they click on the login button. And of course, vice versa, when they do sign up or do log in, it, they, they're redirected back to the home page. Now, um, we, now the home page consists of a lot of snippets. And so when a user clicks on a snippet, they go to the snippet page. Of course, if the snippet is a premium content, the users are redirected to the sign up page. Or if they are logged in, and they are in a premium snippet page. They're redirected to a subscribe page. And from there, the user clicks on the button and is redirected to the Stripe website. And once the user enters their credentials, they then take, they're then redirected to the verify page, which then, which then updates our database and allows and gives the user permission to, to look at the new premium contents or code snippets in this case. And then they're, ver they're redirected back to the home page. So let's talk about future, future features. And given the time constraint we had, we had a lot of features we wanted to implement. And one of them was snippet descriptions. If you, if you remember back at the demo, we only showed the code snippets and the title. In the future, we want to show more descriptions about the snippet so that, it, so that, the snippet, so that it, it would be easier to understand the code snippets. We wanted to implement a language icon so that, the, so that the snippet pages, so that users know what language the snippet, uh, code snippet is. Of course, we also want to implement a liking and a disliking system so that users can know what, what, what code snippet is popular and maybe even check if the code actually works. We also want to support other forms of login and not just email. For example, through Facebook, Google, and LinkedIn, and, Express, and many others. And of course, we want to help programmers. So we we want them to we want them to monetize the code that they have submitted to our website. Lastly, of course, we want users to we want users to have their own snippet lists and libraries, so that next time, next time they come to the website, they can just view snippets that they found interesting. And on to Seth. We will talk about the technologies we used for our product. All right. Um, thank you, Keizo. Um, so, right, I'm going to talk about the technologies that we use to build our app. Um, on the front end, as you can see, uh, we built our uh, components with React. Um, and then we use React Router to help navigate through the various components of the front end. And then we used a technology called uh, Material UI for styling all of our components and creating our uh, branding. Um, on the back end, we wrote our server in Node.js and Express. And then we connect to a Postgres uh, database um, with a technology called uh, Connex. Um, and we're also using this uh, package called uh, JWT, which is how we do our user authentication. And uh, lastly, on the back end, um, we were really uh, grateful to have this opportunity to work with uh, Stripe. Um, it was pretty exciting for us because we got to uh, use this API and they were really uh, generous with their time and coaching us how to use it. And um, I think really exciting because it got us closer to building really a business ready application that we could potentially deploy and monetize. Um, and then uh, lastly, for our technology stack, we are deployed on Heroku. And so now I'm going to discuss the uh, development approach. 
All right. So as for uh, as for our development and our workflow, uh, we tried the best we could to use uh, best practices for managing progress and versions and productivity. And we tried to adopt the philosophies of agile and continuous deployments. And uh, basically what that means is that we sort of set goals together in an open discussion format and we broke down our tasks as a team. And then we built the minimum amount of uh, components or code that we could um, at every time before uh, deploying it. And that way we could continuously deploy each piece of our app and test it uh, live. And the effect of that is that we were able to make sure that we were maximizing our time efficiency and not investing time in uh, solutions that weren't going to end up working or get into the final product. Um, and then the last technique that we used is uh, mob programming. And uh, basically this means that we stuck together for most of the project. And this was really helpful for us to experiment with new technologies because um, we could you know, put our heads together and kind of come up with ideas to push the limits of each of these new technologies and see how we could uh, implement them the best. Um, and so that's, that's sort of a summary of our approach. And then next, we're going to go back to Keizo and Dom, and they're going to talk about uh, some of the uh, difficulties and challenges that we faced and things that we learned uh, while we were doing this project. Yeah, so we learned a lot uh, during the course of this project about new technologies, um, one of them being React Router. So uh, Keizo mentioned it briefly on the UX flow. So React Router lets us redirect users to certain pages, and we wanted to make sure that the user experience uh, made sense. And using React Router with a lot of redirects and like uh, having the server give us back certain uh, HTTP statuses and redirecting based on that was something that we had to do during this project. Uh, also, uh, JWT or JSON web tokens for authentication. Uh, the whole process from getting the user's information on sign up to uh, hashing their password and storing stuff in the uh, database, to then signing the uh, token, and then finding a way to persist that token in the browser. Um, at first, we were thinking local storage, but after a little more research, we found that we can store them in HTTP-only cookies so that um, the client could access it through the uh, document object. Uh, that whole process uh, was a good learning experience during this project. So we also had problems with payment validation. And that is because, if you remember, we use Stripe to process our payments. So what we've done is that when Stripe redirects the user back to our website, we actually, we actually configured it so that Stripe would send us more additional info when the user is redirected to our website. And from the info received from Stripe, we can then, we can then update our database such that to allow the the user to be updated to, to be to a premium user, so they can they can view um, premiums uh, code code snippets. We've also had some problem with debugging, and and in my case, I had some problems with React hooks, and the errors were quite vague. And because of that, it took a lot of time to debug the issue. But ultimately, it came to just me installing a React a React based package. In the in the server side. So next, Seth will be talking about the groups, challenges, and learnings. All right, thank you. Um, right, so of course, as developers, uh, we can accomplish uh, so much more working as a team as opposed to just working on individual projects. Um, but of course, working as a big team also comes with its own challenges. Um, and so just, you know, speaking about a couple of them, um, as alluded to earlier, we implemented mob programming, which was great for problem solving, but um, we also learned that, of course, it uh, really costs a lot of uh, time sometimes. Um, and our way of dealing with this was really to just, uh, you know, not be strict about our approach at any given time, because sometimes uh, one singular philosophy doesn't fit exactly with what you're trying to accomplish. Um, and so for us, uh, eventually with more monotonous work that we were used to, we decided to break up into smaller groups and that allowed us to tackle problems in a more time effective way. 
And, um, you know, also Dom and Keizo and I each have different experiences with different technologies and we have different strengths. And we also have a lot of different opinions about uh, styling or about the user experience and functionality. And, uh, you know, we figured out that the solution for us was not to just uh, compromise on what the solution should be, but um, we actually had a really open-minded discussion each time and we decided to explore the reasoning behind why we had these assumptions. And oftentimes uh, we came to the same conclusion in the end and we found a better solution that would make a better experience for the user. Um, just by, you know, discussing the reasons why we came to, to a consensus. Um, and of course, another uh, consequence of that is that you're often overflowing with a lot of ideas and that can lead to time management issues. And so that was uh, difficult for us to prune a lot of those ideas and to stay uh, focused, um, but it was definitely necessary and something that we had to practice while we were um, trying to achieve minimum viable product for uh, tonight's presentation. Um, so yeah, and then uh, lastly, actually, we use this uh, this tool to code together called LiveShare, and it's actually quite buggy sometimes. And you know, with code, you have to be very, very exact. You can't have you know copies of lines, of course. Um, and so, when we had these issues, we really learned to take advantage of multiple technologies and not to rely on one approach. Um, take advantage of Git commit features and versioning and, um, you know, just that helped us to stay on track and avoid a lot of bugs. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a summary of what we were able to learn from this project. And um, yeah, after that, that's about it. And so I really just like to thank you all for your time. And, um, you know, if you have a minute, please uh, take out your smartphone and uh, scan these QR codes and check out our app. So at uh, Code Snippets here, you can uh, actually play with the app and give it a shot or you can see our actual code on github thank you okay team code snippets awesome awesome job uh, and excellent presentation i really enjoyed that and i'm sure that everyone else out there in youtube land did as well Okay, so the next team we have up next is Team Ichi, and uh, they named themselves that because they all like dogs, which I think is super, super cute. Um, and they're going to be presenting an app called Flap, which is uh, an app for up and coming property managers who want to streamline all of their information that they need for their day to day activities and manage them directly from desktop and mobile. Um, so if any of you, you know, post COVID, have an Airbnb or are looking to get into some some tenants here, uh, they have the app for you. So uh, Team Itchy, are you all ready to go? Okay. I believe so. Uh, Kevin, I am not able to see your video. Oh, there you are, awesome. Okay, everyone give it up for Team Itchy. All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out. Uh, we are Team Itchy, and tonight we will be presenting the latest in property management technology, our app Flat, a project built on Stripe API. Uh, let's meet the team. Okay. Like I said, my name is Kevin, and I come from a business background, but I am a developer now. I'm the tech lead for this project and am responsible for the API integration and deployment. Hello, I am Mai. Um, I wrote a lot of code in backend side and the team name Ichi is my dog's name and I hope Ichi-kun is watching our presentation tonight. Hello, my name is Nahoko. My background is in human resources and communication. Now I'm a junior engineer here at Code Criticize. And I basically worked on front end with focus on product management, making sure that our features are aligned with our persona and their needs. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Nick. I have a, an education and business background as well. I worked with Nahoko on the front end, and my focus was more on the design and the user experience. All right, thanks team. 
Uh, next, Nahoko will be telling you about the app. Okay, so what is the app about? It's an app for upcoming property management companies. By now, we all know that property management or real estate in general may not be the most cutting edge industry or it sounds really interesting for many of you guys. But we, are, we were really excited about this idea and we were actually really proud of the app that we were able to build. So let me tell you first how we landed on this idea. So early on, we learned that Stripe's main core users were fast-growing businesses, and also their strength was accepting payment in multiple currencies, and they are really flexible. And from there, we started talking about our own experiences, like I and Mai, we recently moved to Tokyo for this program, and Nick and Kevin, they have been living in Tokyo in Japan for years. And then from there, we all agreed that what we want to see more property management companies, you know, welcoming new technologies and international tenants as well. So while we were building this app, we had a very specific persona in mind. So we built this app uh, for a startup property management company founded, a, founded by a guy named Ichigo-san. And he's basically competing with large, you know, traditional old school companies doing active marketing while keeping the costs down. So he's doing a lot of answering inquiries from, from you know, potential clients while, you know, without hiring many staff members. And also he's currently managing nine units, handling all the incoming payments from tenants and also outgoing payments to property owners, contractors, or to pay utilities. So based on this persona, we started thinking what our MVP should look like. Yeah, so here is uh, the features that we have. So first of all, it has to list all the property units and we want it to be multiple, multi-view. Uh, multi and also list tenants and collect payments, of course, in multiple currencies, manage properties, prices, and tenants directly from this app. And it's important that this app to be mobile, re mobile responsive because he's often out of office. So I'm pretty sure that you are curious about how this app actually looked like. I'm going to hand it over to Mai to show you our demo. Mai, are you ready? Thank you, Nahoko. I'm ready. So let me do a demo. Imagine you are the property manager, Ichigo-san. One day, a customer called you and you found that uh, you need to check the property information immediately. Let's go to our app. As you can see on the landing page, there's a list of pictures of beautiful properties. Maybe not junk shack here, but when you click one of them, you get detailed information of the property's name, the owner's name, the address, description, and the picture of it. You click a uh, close button and go back to the previous page. Also, in the upper left corner of each picture, you can see which properties are vacant at a glance by looking at the red occupied and a green vacant boxes. If you don't need the pictures, you can click on a switch view here. Okay. And you can see the list with that pictures. When you get a new property, Click Add Product button here. And you can add it by filling in the form and save it. Let's do that here. Now we have all information of a new property. Okay, so let's save it. And you can see the new picture that's uh, named Ropongi Nice that we just created. And if we click this one, you can also 
delete the property. Great. So let's go back to the previous page and click the menu bar. Then the sidebar appears where you can see the products and the customers. Let's look, let's look at the customers next. There's a list of all customers. Imagine you get a new customer. Let's click on this add customer. And this is a page. You can uh, see the all information of the new customer. We're gonna save it. You're gonna see a new customer is called Ichi Asaumi here. And if you click that one and delete, you can get rid of it, right? So finally, you also can use this app for your mobile. It has the same features as web browsers. You can see the list of all properties. If you click one of them, you can get details with the beautiful picture. Um, it's great, isn't it? So um, this is our app. We hope Ichigo-san's business is going to be successful. Now I'm gonna give, uh, I'm gonna pass it Nick to talk about the technologies we used. Oh, thank you, Mai. So getting into what the tech stack was like. Well, the tech we ended up using for the back end we used, of course, the Stripe API. And to communicate with Stripe, we were using a JS Express server. On the front end, we used Vue for our, uh, for our front end and the Vuex store to manage our global state. And then we used Vuetify to make everything pretty and fancy and everything. Uh, next, let's talk about some future features. Well, the first thing we'd like to see implemented in the future is auto payment to vendors. Uh, the whole idea behind our app, as Nahoko said, was to streamline the process for these property management companies from tenant payment all the way down to uh, giving out expenses. So being able to add that payment would be a great thing to get implemented. Another one would be rent splitting. So having functionality where roommates could split rent, or if you have a visitor and you want them to pitch in and help out around the house, you can have them help and pay as well. And one for Ichigo-san that I think is really important is the localization and bilingual abilities of the website. Of course, Ichigo-san is Japanese. We're in Japan. Having the website additionally in Japanese would be a, a great asset. Lastly, it would be great to get payment reminders sent via Line. Uh, as we know, living here in Japan, just about everybody has Line. So it's a very good way to communicate with any of your customers or tenants. Next, let's take a quick look at things we struggled with. So the first thing we struggled with was using Git as a team. Uh, luckily enough, our tech lead, Kevin, is very good with Git, and he was very helpful for all of us, helping us make sure there were no conflicts with merges and everybody was rebasing properly to avoid problems as well. Also, Stripe's API capabilities. Uh, we had a little bit of confusion about how prices and products were so independent of each other. And after we learned why, it really made a lot of sense and we were able to kind of overcome any kind of a misunderstanding we had. We also, the mobile responsiveness was also kind of an issue. Uh, as anybody who's used CSS a lot or have done a lot of media queries, things can get pretty complicated when you want everything to, uh, center on the screen on many different views. And we found it very important. So it was a big focus as well. Lastly, and this is the big one, uh, connecting view to the API. Uh, as I said, this was a bigger struggle. So we're gonna go into a little bit more detail with this one and I'll pass it over to Kevin to start. All right. Well, like Nate said, one challenge is connecting the Stripe API with the view front end. So what you see here is a very simple function built with the Stripe node library. And it's called get all products. And as its name might suggest, it gets all of the products. So this, just as it's written here, was fine in testing. There, there were no problems at all. But when we tried to call this function from the front end, there were some issues. Indeed, there were, Kevin. We, uh, 
We have a little code snippet here as well. And this was what was in our front end Vuex store. And as you can see, it's awaiting a promise for getting all products, which is the left side function. And the interesting thing about this is we were getting nothing in return, whether it be an error or some kind of uh, resolve. Uh, we were just kind of getting dead air, which was very interesting to us. Uh, back to Kevin. So we decided use routes. So right here, this is basically the same thing you saw in the previous slide, but we wrote we rewrote get all products to work with Express.js. So it's effectively the same functionality. It still gets all the products from Stripe, but it is now for HTTP requests. And speaking of which, here is Express.js utilizing get all products. So I'm not sure if you know how Express.js works, but if a get request is sent to the endpoint products seen here, then it will call get all products. And whatever get all products resolves to is sent to that endpoint and is usable by the requester. So this has uh, different and better implications for the front end. Yes, uh, as you can see from the new front end function, not a lot changed except instead of calling against get all products directly, we're using Axios to get that API point. And of course, that function on the left is doing the rest of the work for us. And we found that this solved our problems immediately and we were able to get all of that beautiful data that you saw during the demo. Ah, back to Kevin. All right, thank you. So everyone, thank you for hearing our presentation. If you would like to know more about us or about the app, there is a QR code there. It links to our hosted app on Heroku and also lists all of our LinkedIn profiles. Appreciate you watching. Have a good evening. Take care. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, team Ichi. Um, that was an awesome presentation and speaking as an international resident of Japan uh, for, for several years now, I can say that something like this would make a big, dif big difference um, in the lives of all of us. So thank you so much. What a great idea and a great presentation. And so here to wrap up our student presentations from the evening tonight is team Diggle. And so they're gonna be presenting an app to us called Dr. Auction. So utilizing Stripe's tools, Dr. Auction provides healthcare providers and patients by pairing each other uh, through a unique auction system. So pretty interested to see what this is all about. So Team Diggle, please come to the stage. All right, Team Diggle, are we ready to go? Okay, great, take it away. Mm. So, hello, so, hello, everyone. So, we are Team Digger, and I am Hiroki. We are grateful for the opportunity to present our, pr present our product. So our, so, our product is Dr. Dr. Auction. So, first, so I so introduce my team Dikul. So our team has four, four full stack engineers. Kyoko, she is our tech lead, and Hiroki, Shota, and Fred. So first, what is Dr. Auction? So Dr. Auction is a service of matching doctors and patients. It's an auction system. So patient can inform doctors of their, their, their symptoms and the price they wish to pay. Call doctors can get this information and they can decide whether to accept yeah, it, or, it or not. Patient can raise the, the price until some doctor so accept. So, there are three patients and two doctors. 
patient inform the symptoms and desired price. When patient has backache and desired price is thousand n, so and so on. And doctors get this information and decide whether to consult this patient or not. So in this case, backache patient and disease patient see doctors. But so headache patient can see any doctor because when doctor think so headache is difficult. And so cancer doctor thinks it is too cheap. So headache patient decide to raise doctor's fee in the, the next slide. So this patient raised doctor's fee to 3,000 n. And when doctor become interested, the patient can see this doctor. So in this way, patient by doctor's consultation by auction, that's doctor auction. So can next guy so introduce you to, to that person. So this is user to use that person. Doctor person think I want to consult patient with reasonable fee, not too cheap fees. And patient, patient, patient person thinks I am sick and I want to see a good doctor even if it costs more money. So, so next presenter is Fred. So Fred, are you, are you ready? Yes, thank you, Hiroki, for the introduction. So, as you may have by now have a basic idea of the app, let me, let me tell you guys how we did, did we come up with this idea. So your key that you just hear about is actually a professional doctor. And as personal experience, he realized that today, the matching between patient and doctor, and especially the pricing, uh, are pretty run up. So in fact, we never know how much is going to be until the very end of the consultation, right? On the top of that, the price can be very surprising as well. The idea that we came up with is that we could solve that with our auction system. What about the technology that we used? So let me introduce you to a few technology that we have. Um, so we have React and React Bootstrap as a front end. It was personally to me the first time using Bootstrap, I mean, React Bootstrap. And to be honest, you can have a pretty decent design without any line of CSS. Um, can be a life server if you're in a rush or have a very short deadline. Um, for the, for the back end, we have Firebase. We deploy on it. We make use of the authentication service that they provide and the real-time database service as well. Uh, Stripe payment, as you may know by now, was the main subject of the week. But what is Stripe? Stripe is a payment processing platform that allow bank account transfer. It takes away a lot of complex billing logic and implementation from the developer. And if it's your first time using it, well, they have an awesome documentation as well. Mm, I think now it's time for demo time, so I will leave it to Yoko. Yoko, are you there? Yep, thank you, Fred. So let's move on to our demos. Sorry. So this is what our home page of our app looks like. We have a login and sign up for the doctors and for the patients here. Let's start with doctors. So if I'm up here for the first time, I can sign up. I can put my email in, my password, confirmation, first name, and last name. But I already have an account, so let's use the login. Uh, OK, so this is, you'll go to the D for doctor, and I would log in. And here I can see uh, there's only one right now, but there uh, you will be able to see all the lists of the posts that the patients have made with each symptoms and how much they're willing to pay. And 
Uh, let's go to the patient side now. So here the home page again. For the patients, you can also sign up or log in. So when I log in, here I can put in a consult consulting form. So if I have a headache, I can put in headache and I'm willing to pay, I don't know, 505 yen, 5,500 yen. And when I hit apply, so this is our pending display. Right now, um, in my doctor's window, if I refresh this page, this uh, the post that I have just posted as a patient comes up. And if I click on accept this consult, I can ac accept this. Uh, yep. And it goes, disappears from the list. If I want to check it, I can click on a list of consults. And I have accepted a lot of here. So, but this is the one that I made just now. And when I go back to the patient side and refresh the page, my application has now been accepted and I can go to the payment. And by using the Stripe API, I can put in my number, all the information and then pay for my consultation and get an appointment with the doctor. That will be all for the demo. And uh, this next would be Shota. Thank you, it was so cool demo. So next I'm gonna talk about the challenges that we faced. The first challenge is about Git conflict. In our team, we have four members and we are working on separate environments and pushing to the same remote environment. Yoko, who is a tech lead on my team, has merged or commits, but she was really confused because sometimes we are working as same file at the same time. So we think we should have take more time to meet before we have. The second challenge is learning new tech. For this project, we need to have a login system and had, had to find the best tech for login system. Eventually, we used Firebase to solve the problem with the login feature. But we spent a lot of time discovering which technology was the best choice for us. Besides, we also use Stripe for our payment system, but we had a hard time figuring out how to use it. The third challenge is using all technologies together. This may be a little bit uh, like the first gig conflict, we face many problems in combining the authentication system with the front end side. We face, uh, sorry, going back this. We face many problems in combining the. Uh, we need to do commits more often into the main branch to keep track of progress. Next, please. Okay, uh, next I'm gonna talk about future of the app. There are three main future features we want. The first future feature is users being able to target a specific set of doctors. This means the patients will be able to choose the specific doctor. At this moment, the app only allows to be doctors to choose the patients. So adding this function will allow the app to be more accessible for patients. The second future feature is the filter function. Currently, only doctors can select 
patient. Patients can select doctors at all. So as we introduce, we add the filter feature for patients, and then we would like to allow patients to sort the doctors by specialty so that they can search the best doctors for their symptoms. The third is a timeout feature. At this moment, requests from patient will remain until the patient delete their own application or doctor accepts the patient's request. For avoiding this situation, we'd like to add a time feature so that we can delete the old application forms automatically. Also, oh sorry, this feature may remind patients to change their request after some time. That will be all. Thank you for listening to our presentation. If you want to take a look at the code of the app, please uh, uh, share your code. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Team Diggle. Awesome work. So good job again. Yay. And you guys are welcome to, to leave the stage if you'd like. <laughs> awesome. I love seeing your faces. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so thanks again to all of the students. Um, Team Diggle, great presentation and interesting idea. Um, and you know, I hope that you and our community will join uh, the rest of us in, in saying congratulations to all of the students and giving your feedback and comments in the comments on the YouTube stream. Uh, we're really excited to see those. There's always been a lot. Um, thanks again to Daniel and Kenta for you know, just sort of donating so much time to our students this week. Um, you know, I think it was a really good experience for the students and, and for us as well. So really appreciated that. Um, I wanna mention a couple of important things coming up for this cohort. So the first is uh, actually not this Saturday, but next Saturday, February 27th. Um, while the students have been building this app and doing intense like one day reviews, uh, since week two, they have also been preparing for a 25 minute tech talk that is self research and sort of independently run outside of the intensity of the bootcamp. And so this class and, and graduates and alumni from other classes are gonna be presenting the fruits of their labor next Saturday, the 27th. So please join us there. This will also be available online and live streamed um, and it's gonna be amazing. So join us for big mini conf. And in addition to that, if you wanna kind of see our students progress, uh, they're gonna be fully fledged graduate engineers in just about a month. So March 25th is gonna be their demo day. Uh, I can't see the students' faces right now, but I can kind of imagine what they're looking like at the moment. Um, so please do mark your calendars for that and come back and check and see how far these students are able to come. And so with that, I want to say good night, everyone. Uh, it's getting warmer, so please enjoy yourselves, but stay safe, and we'll see you at the next event. Thank you so much for your continued support. Have a good night and have a good weekend.